Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, I'm replacing this temporary TV stand and upgrading to a wall mounted system. I need to install a TV mount that can attach to an uneven stone fireplace. And I was lucky enough to find something that gave me a full range of motion so I could raise and lower the TV as well as view it from a different room. To attach my TV, I plan on using the Omni Mount Play 40 which claims 20 inches of vertical up and down motion, as well as being able to point the TV at a full 90 degree angle from the wall. My fireplace has a stone brick facade. I'm expecting the real trick to this install is going to be mounting it to the stone brick without cracking it or ripping it down completely from the wall. This was the only mount like this left at my local electronics store. Not only that, but it was the last one left and the salesperson said they wouldn't be stocking this item anymore. I was definitely curious to break this open and find out how the install was going to work. I also wanted to see what the build quality was like so that I could feel confident in hanging my TV from it. The first thing I was happy to find was a range of motion and installation template. This is a nice large piece of paper showing where the TV will be able to reach once you choose an install point. I was also quite pleased to find the components felt very solid and heavy. I wasn't able to articulate the arm without installing it, but it felt nice and solid. I figure it needs the weight of the TV to help with the motion. Unfortunately, it very quickly became apparent that the size of the mounting plate was going to be a problem with my mace. The highs and lows of my rough cut stone could be a difference of almost 2 inches, and depending on where the mounting place was sitting, it would rock back and forth on only 2 points of contact. I figured with the weight of the TV at full extension, this was not going to be solid enough, and probably not the recommended install method. So I'm going to have to come up with a better choice of mount. And that meant back to the electronics store for me. After spending some time with the salesperson, we found this. The Omni Mount Play 70. This one was in the back of the discount bin. The salesperson said that it was returned in good enough condition, but he couldn't guarantee that everything would be included. But with this one being half the price of the Play 40, I figured if there's any missing components, I'd probably be able to come up with some kind of solution. This one's also rated for a larger and heavier TV, which is more appropriate for what I'm using it for. The first thing I found missing was the instructions for installation, as well as the range of motion mounting template. I was able to find the install instructions on the company's website, but not having the template was a bit of a bad start. The lag bolts, however, were included, and you could tell that someone else had already tried to install them. But that doesn't affect me, these will still work just fine. My bricks are about 3.5 inches thick on average. I know from my renovation that behind this is a half inch of plywood and then the insulation. The lag bolts that came with the mount are only 3 inches long. If I was mounting this into wood or concrete, that would be plenty. But my bricks are 50 years old and they're just attached to the plywood with masonry cement. I don't trust that if I put all the weight of the TV pulling on the bricks, that those bricks would stay attached to the wall. I'm going to have to come up with a better approach. However, before I get too caught up in the install details, I want to make sure I know where I want it to be. I cleared out the space so I could temporarily put it in different positions so I could see where it is I might want to drill my holes. I started out with trying different positions. I wasn't sure exactly how high I wanted it to be, the full range of motion, and how it was going to sit on the stone. I did however find that the same problem as a smaller mount still happened with this one. It would rock back and forth because no four points of the stones were equal. So not having the install template meant that I needed to go take some measurements myself. And it was too hard to do just on the floor, so I decided to go outside and install the mount on a proper post. This way I could measure the exact range of motion of the arm, as well as the actual up and down spacing that it needs, and how far away from the wall it wanted to have the TV. I wrote down all of these numbers the best I could, so that I would be able to place it properly on the mantle. This also gave me a good opportunity to make sure that all the components that I were going to need were actually there. And I got lucky. I found that everything I needed to install it was included. All the nuts and bolts, all the mounting screws, everything was there except the instructions. This is a good example also of how you should use the proper bolts for the right kind of installation. I'm just using regular wood screws here and the amount of stress that I put on these bolts meant was a little too much and as I was taking it off I had found that I had sheared one of the screws right off. But before giving up on this mount, I wanted to make sure that I knew where I wanted to put it and that it wasn't going to work. So I measured out the center of the fireplace and then transferred that mark up the center of the mantle. I put down masking tape before making a mark so that I wouldn't damage the paint job. Not knowing the exact clearances that were needed for it, I decided that just lifting it off the mantle by about an inch and a half 
would be good enough. So I used a piece of scrap 2x4 just to keep it in place. I made sure the mount was sitting level and then used a marker to draw positions on the stone where I'd want to drill the holes. With those marks drawn, you could really see how the uneven stone might be causing me a problem. This top mark, which is about two inches from the bottom mark here, the surface difference between the two marks is about a half inch, which means that when I pull these tight, it's not going to keep the mount straight. The bottom mark also is riding on a peak that's much higher than the other marks. I've decided to not let this deter me. I think I can come up with a solution to even out these peaks and valleys once the holes are drilled. I went to my local box store and rented an impact hammer, as well as a couple different drill bits. I made sure to pick up a quarter inch drill bit as well as a 3 8 drill bit. I've never used an impact drill like this before, but I found it really easy to use. It was only, I think, around $15 to rent it for four hours, and if you're just drilling six holes, this is a really cheap solution. It comes with drill bits as well, so the price of buying my own drill bits and using one of my own drills, this is a cheaper solution. My plan is to start with the quarter inch drill bit so that it doesn't swim around too much, and then if needed, go to the larger drill bit after that. I could tell right away that the hammer drill was a good choice. If I had used my own drill, it would have taken much longer, and I would have spent more on bits than renting this tool. Something I noticed before getting too far along with the first hole was that the top holes were almost exactly lined up with the grout line of the stone brick. As soon as I saw that, I was worried that if I started to try and drill in this location, it would just slip off of this and go into the grout, which would mean my two holes would not line up anymore. I think the best way to approach this is to move the entire rig up by about half an inch. I decided to drill this hole first, that way I could put the mount back in place, line it up with the hole that I already drilled, and then make new marks on the stones. The impact drill made quick work of the masonry cement though, went through much easier here than it was going through the stone. After making my new marks, I continued drilling the rest of the holes. I found it a bit difficult to drill on top of the peaks of the rough stone. The drill bit wanted to slip around, so I had to quite often wiggle the, the bit in different directions to try and keep it from drifting too far. Here it looks like I'm drilling in an upward direction, which I am kind of, because the drill bit wants to swim down. Here's the result of all the holes done with the quarter inch drill bit. I decided to test one of the holes out with the larger drill bit and see if that was going to make it any easier to install. Starting with the smaller drill bit and then moving up to the larger one meant that the second hole would go a lot faster. After a bit of drilling, I could tell that the drill bit had hit wood and it wasn't going forward any further. I used a pencil just to clean out the hole and measure how far down I was. I came out at around 4 inches. My plan is to use a type of anchor that will slip through the hole through the plywood and then expand on the other side once I pull it tight. That means that I need to drill a hole through the plywood to be able to install the anchor. The anchors I've chosen require the 3 8 inch hole to be able to be installed correctly. I'm going to start with this extra long quarter inch drill bit just to tap the hole. Then once it's cleaned out I'll use this 3 inch spade bit to get it all done. But it's pretty tough in there so I'm not sure if I'll use it for sure or not. It, I don't want the spade bit to bind up. After drilling with the quarter inch drill bit for about an inch or so in depth, I started to get concerned because I knew that I was supposed to be in a half inch of plywood and not any more than that. I'm not really sure what was going on here. After carefully measuring it with different pens and pencils and things, I determined that I must have actually hit a stud. Um, I was going to use an anchor to pull the drywall tight to the brick, but if I've hit a stud, I can use a different method altogether. I figure, however, that I still need to use the anchors on the other side, so I use the 3 8 inch masonry bit and start widening this hole as well. I switched my wood drill bit and found that I hit a stud again on this side. I measured my, two, my hole distance and they happened to be exactly 16 inches apart on center, so if I hit one stud, I'm going to hit both studs, so I lucked out in this. Instead of using the uh, expanding anchors, I can use more traditional lag bolts. I found the largest one at the Home Depot, which was a 6 inch, I believe, uh, 6 inch 3 8 and it looks like it'll just barely work for me. Before drilling out the holes to the 3 8 inch size of the bolt, I went ahead and just placed the mount onto the space and just to sort of see how the lag bolt would work. And I found that given the peaks and valleys of my fireplace mantle, the lag bolt was not actually going to be long enough. It was only, it could only barely bite into the wood as it was. So. 
I'm going to need something that's going to be able to pull at least two more inches, and I still need to solve the issue of the peaks and valleys of the stone not being even. So to replace these six inch lead bolts that were not quite going to get the job done, I went back to the hardware store and found these. This is an eight inch bolt. Um, I'm not sure what it's originally for. It was in the hardware. It was in the building supply section and the person told me that it was an engineered bolt so there was a high strength bolt and that it would be able to hold together my TV mount no problem. The eight inches gives me about uh, you know two and a half inches of threaded space that I'll be able to use into the wood. Um, compared to the six inch bolt these are really feel much better. In fact the eight inches feels like it might be a little too much but I think that gives me a bit more space to play with the uneven surface of the fireplace. I also had to buy a special Torx head bit for my impact driver to be able to put these in properly. I decided the most secure approach to attaching the mount to the wall would be to give it a nice even surface to bolt to. So I cut a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood on my table saw the exact same size as the mount. I marked the holes of the mount onto the piece of plywood and drilled them out to be the exact same size. I started by drilling pilot holes with a 3 8 inch bit and then used the jigsaw to clean out the hole so it was the same oval shape as inside the mount. This is just construction plywood so I took some time to give it a nice proper sand. This really cleaned it up, it was pretty rough and splintery. I did do all sides but I spent most of the time on the side that was going to be facing out. I still had the same leftover paint from my last renovation and I cracked that open and found that it had completely separated so I had to give this a thorough stir before putting it to use. It's been sitting outside all winter so it has frozen and thawed a few times but I'm thinking it'll still work just fine for this application. I used my paint stir on the end of my drill and that made pretty good work of it. I did make sure it was thoroughly mixed though before using it. I dusted off my piece of wood with a dry paintbrush just to make sure there was no dust left inside the grooves. The paint went on pretty thick, this might be because it's been sitting so long, but it still went on fine. And a thick coat is okay with me because I don't plan on giving, letting it dry and giving it a second coat. So one thick coat will work for me. I started by painting the back side first, then threw some screws down on the wood, flipped it over and set the wet side on the screws. This way the paint won't glue itself to the board below it. I took a bit more time in making sure this side was going to be nice and clean. Now I just have to let that dry overnight and it'll be good to install. The board felt significantly more solid than just the plain mount by itself. There was almost no rocking back and forth. And with this here, the mount can pull down tight to the board and the board can flex against the unevenness of the stone. To pick up the slack of the difference in height between the different drill holes, I used a combination of flat washers and compression washers. I also used a rubber washer at the very end just to help it all grip together on the stone. I was able to stack these up a little bit larger than they needed to be and the compression washers would take up the slack. I continually added to these so that it had just enough to keep it raised off of the surface of the stone. And when it pulled tight, it pulled down nice and snug. I repeated this for all six holes, making sure I kept each stack of washers separate and knew which hole each of those stacks were supposed to go with. One final clean out with the vacuum and I'm ready to do the final install. I reattached the mount to the board, pushed through the new bolts and threaded each of my stack of washers onto each bolt. You can see here how different each of the stack heights needed to be. I used my impact driver along with the new Torx head bit that I got for these bolts to tighten down the whole mount. I threaded each end individually first and then used the impact driver to finish the job. I did one bolt at a time to make sure not to twist the mount too much as I was tightening it down. With that tightened down right, it felt very secure and I was pretty happy with how it looked. It was nice and clean and nice and succinct. I don't even notice that there's a board attached behind the mount. With the really difficult stuff done, now it's just a matter of assembling the mount for the final TV. I slid the center piece back into position and continued installing the rest of the pieces. I decided to mount it to the far left position, that way when the TV is up and to the side, it won't be overhanging the edge of the mantle. 
I installed all the nuts and bolts and washers as per the instructions I found on the internet. And moved on to figuring out how I'm supposed to attach the TV to the mounting bracket. It says in the instructions that this is a universal system and will fit any TV. First thing was to find the right size bolts for my TV, then the bolt pattern had to match. Once I had these things figured out, it was easy to use the install instructions I found online and figure out which pattern I had to use on the mounting bracket. My TV had a square mounting system on the back, which meant that each of these arms had to be set at just a straight 45 degree angle. I attached each of the bolts using the washers provided and put everything together just loosely to begin with, make sure it was all going to fit and be in the right position. Once I was happy that everything was sitting correctly, I used a ratchet to tighten it all up and I was pretty comfortable with how firm it all felt once it was all tight. With the mounting plate attached, I could bring it over to the wall and attach it to the arm. My TV is a little on the heavy side, it's about 45 pounds. Um, it was not something I could do by myself, I had to get some help in making sure that the arm positioned into the mounting plate. But with that, it clipped into place really easily and it was able to support the weight. There's a tension bolt inside the arm that I had to adjust to make sure it would hold the proper weight of the TV. This was just a matter of finding the right size socket and tightening the bolt. And once everything was done, the mounting system was finished. I'm able to reposition the TV in pretty much any direction that I like. I can rotate it, tilt it, forwards, backwards, left and right, and it all seems to work really well. One thing I would do differently if I could go back and redo it is I don't think I would mount the mount at the dead center of the fireplace. I think I would offset it a bit more because when I have the TV flush against the fireplace, I kind of wish I had had the TV more centered rather than the offset of the mount. What the offset does allow for is I can point the TV towards the couches, which makes it actually a lot easier to view, but when I want to put the TV away, it just means that it's slightly offset. I really like that I can actually point the TV all the way to the other room. I can point it at our kitchen, which makes it really easy to watch while we're doing other things. When I was doing this entire project, the thing I was most afraid of was that the stonework wouldn't react well to being drilled, but it turned out to be just fine, and the stability of everything just seems great. I am happy that I was able to hit some studs, and it all pulled together nice and tight. This project was a bit more advanced than I was originally expecting it to be, but if you just take your time and rent the proper tools, it really wasn't too difficult at all. Something else I'm pretty happy with is the piece of wood that I used to mount the bracket to the wall pretty much turned invisible. It's using the exact same paint as the stonework, so you really don't notice it. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how clean this turned out. That finishes up this video for Little Home Projects. I'm sorry this one ran so long. If you'd rather I chop these into smaller videos from now on, please leave me a comment in the bottom. I would definitely like the feedback. I try to make new videos each week, so if you'd like to see more, please hit subscribe. If you thought this video was worth it, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.